it's Martin Hughes here and we're outside Rogerstown Estuary Park uh, up near Blake's Cross here now this used to be called Belady Dump when I was a kid and we used to come down here like everybody else in North County Dublin and dump all our crap in here that big hill you can see behind me here underneath that many many years of rubbish now when I was a kid that would have been maybe 35 years ago so we'd come down here with my dad and we were recycling back even then because we would occasionally take more stuff out of here than we'd actually bring in. We would get bicycles and toys and pram wheels and make go-karts and stuff out of it. What can I say, we didn't have PlayStation back then. So back then, this place would be covered in seagulls. Absolutely covered in them, hundreds of them. And if you were trying to get a set of wheels out of the rubbish, to bring home to make a go-kart with and there was food or some kind of things there that the seagulls were interested in you would actually have to fight the seagull to get the wheels that's how aggressive that the seagulls were back then um, but if you listen carefully here now or look around even there are no seagulls you can hear beautiful bird song chirpy chirpy stuff really cool really beautiful now actually as a side note this place I believe opens this weekend and I actually got a sneak preview of it with some other people last year uh, with the bird hide and all that kind of thing it's very cool and you should really check it out but one thing that is not here today is the huge amount of seagulls that used to be here when this was a, a functioning uh, rubbish dump and the reason there are no seagulls here today is because there's nothing for them to eat. Now, we're going to magically transform over to have another look at uh, Lakshini. So, by magic we're transformed here to Lakshini Harbour. Now, again, I used to come down here when I was a kid. And we would fish just off the harbour wall over there. And again... Uh, we had issues here with seagulls back then that when you were fishing you used to have to if you caught a fish you used to have to reel the fish in real quick because as soon as the fish broke the water the seagulls would attack and try and snatch the fish literally off the end of your fishing line now you would have to get the fish down if the and into a bucket before the seagulls would land and attack and if they were trying to get the thing out of the bucket and you tried to stop them again you're in for a little bit of a fight now while there are sometimes seagulls around here because we're at the sea uh, occasionally uh, you'll, you'll see a few of them here now because there's no fishermen here today as you can see behind me there doesn't seem to be anybody working here today and as a result of that I can only see one seagull over there and he seems to be leaving so, again, if there's nothing for them to eat, then they just won't hang around here. This is a pretty magnificent place, actually. It's um, beautiful here. Anytime there's a bit of good weather. There's a marvellous walk over there across the cliffs and across the shale front here. And behind me over here is the uh, Fingal County Council Artists in Residence uh, building. So that's used for um, when the lifeguards are not using it. Local artists can apply to come here and uh, be resident in it for, I think, about a month or something at a time. Uh, it's a lovely place. Uh, needs more bins, like everywhere else. Let's wander over to Scaries and have a look over there. Okay, here we are in Scaries. Now, there's a couple of lads here on the fishing boats. So there are a few, two, four, six, eight, ten seagulls floating around the place here. Um, so you can kind of see where I'm starting to go with this. There are lads working here on the boats. There is the possibility of food. So if there's food and the seagulls can see it or smell it or whatever it is, order it, uh, then you're going to get them lying around here. Now, somebody who may or may not be running in this campaign and I'm not going to say who it was is advocating that we just slaughter all the seagulls or cull them back or lock them up I'm not quite sure post them somewhere 
um, and went on the radio and said that he recently discovered that there is something in bird poo that is harmful to humans. Well, I'm going to just break the news here to you people. Every single creature that lives on this planet, that walks, that flies, that swims, also poos, and anything in that poo is harmful to humans. It can make you go blind, it can make you go deaf, it can cause your lungs to fail, and it can kill you, depending on the poo and what they've eaten and what kind of animal it is. So I'm going to say, this, say to him what I said to my own kids, don't eat it. If there's no food for the seagulls, they will go somewhere else where there is food. The seagulls are not the problem as such. If there is a cull required of any species of animal, then that decision has to be made by experts in the field, not by somebody who's looking for a few more votes in the local elections. Focus here. It's not about the seagulls, it's about the food and their access to it. If there is food and you try and go near it and the seagull wants to go near it, the seagull is going to be violent. The seagulls are not getting more aggressive. The seagulls have always been aggressive. When we were kids, we called them flying rats. Because they're scavengers and because that they eat whatever they can find and they don't care what that is. Now, if you kill all the seagulls or the flying rats, then the land rats will then come in to take their place. That's how nature works. So we need to think very carefully before we go off with our machine guns and start blowing these creatures out of the sky. That's all I'm saying. Here in Scaries Harbour when I was a kid, and I'm talking 35 years ago, we used to come down here and we used to go fishing. Um, the seagulls were here then, just like they're here today. And they also had seals swimming in the water and there's still a few of them lying around here uh, as well. Now back in them days, uh, we used to bring an extra old fishing rod for a diversion against the, sea, the seagulls at least anyway. So what happened here when you were fishing? You, you hook a fish, you have to get it out of the water real quick before the seals get it and then once it's out of the water you have to beat the seagulls back with the old club to get the fish into the bucket before the seagulls would come down and uh, find the from me. And then I'm going to head home because quite frankly it's a bit cold out here. So here we are at Barbrigan Harbour. Uh, it's a bit quiet around here today. Again, there's a couple of guys down there working on the fishing boats, but it is relatively quiet. And as a result of it being relatively quiet, we've only got maybe half a dozen seagulls flying over where the men are working. So you can see the way that the flying rats operate. If they see the opportunity for food or they know that there are men near the boats, there are humans there, and the possibility of food is there, that's where they head for. When those men go off home and the seagulls know that there's no food to be had, then they'll go somewhere else looking for the food. There's a problem in all of these towns in that we're missing bins. There's a huge shortage of public bins. There's a huge shortage of people putting their rubbish properly into the bins. And there's a very big shortage of people bringing their rubbish home with them and disposing of it carefully and properly. And this is the key to getting rid of the seagulls as such. The seagull problem is not the problem. A seagull didn't wake up one morning and decide, there's a human over there, I think I can take him and go over and attack him. They were always aggressive. If you come across a place where a seagull is nesting, and you go near the seagull's nest, you better have some serious ninja skills because that seagull will come down and they will rip you to pieces because they're protecting their nest, they're protecting where they have their food and that's what they do, that's nature. We have taken so much fish out of the sea that there's not a whole heap left for them to scavenge. Our industrial commercial fishing fleets, the huge big ones, have decimated the seas and the seagulls are moving inland. The seagulls used to live over Bilele dump when I was a kid, hundreds of them. When they closed the dump, 
there was no food for them, they moved on. When there's nothing for them to eat around the harbour because the fishermen are not doing much, then they move inland. And if you leave your rubbish lying around and don't dispose of your food waste properly, then the seagulls are going to be attracted to that. And if they come to that more than once, then they're going to remember that there's a source of food over there in Bob's back garden. And not only are they going to keep going into Bob's back garden to get the food, they're going to build a nest in Bob's chimney and set up a small colony there of their own. And that's where you get your seagull problem. So my point is the seagulls aren't the problem as such. The humans are the problem. And if we address that, I guarantee you, I've seen it. I've just shown it to you. Seagulls, hundreds of them on the dump, close the dump, seagulls are gone same as the beaches it'll be the same in the towns and in your houses and on your chimneys if we have to get Fingal County Council to supply more bins for each of the towns and we need to as a species ourselves we need to be more aware of what we're doing with our waste and we need to dispose especially of our food waste in a proper manner and if we do that you won't see any seagulls. Barbrigan won't have the 100 or so, 180 something seagulls, I think was the count roughly. I don't know who stood up there and counted seagulls, but apparently somebody did. And there was 180 or 200 seagulls here in the town at the last count. But you're only gonna see them where rubbish is left behind and food waste is left behind because they're just creatures who want to survive and they're going to do that. Now, I don't like seagulls. Don't get me wrong, I'm not standing here defending seagulls. I think they're loud, they're smelly, they crap all over my car, and they will attack you if you uh, get too close to them. And that's fair enough. All across this walk here, this is a beautiful walk all across the beach, all across the head, and all the way up to Braemar Castle. It's one of my favorite walks, and uh, it's great. And there are some bins there, but there's a lot of rubbish left there as well. And when the bin is full, it needs to be emptied and it's just common sense and it's using your head and it's focusing on a solution for the problem not making the problem worse if we kill all these seagulls then we'll have to get someone in to kill the rats that take their place nature is nature and nature does what nature does yeah I'm going home this is Gary's on Easter weekend this is another one of my favorite walks. It's across the head, down onto the beach, along the promenades, uh, and back up to Main Street. Now, as you can see here, the bins are stuffed. It was a good weekend with plenty of visitors, but the bins haven't been emptied. Now, I've been to Hoat occasionally, over down to Harbour. It's also a nice walk. And I've been there on a Sunday afternoon and I've seen Fingal County Council staff out emptying the bins on a Sunday. So if Hoats can have Fingal County Council staff emptying the bins at the weekends, why can't Barbrigan, why can't Scarries, why can't Loch Shinny? Okay, and just like that I'm back home again. My final point on this subject is this. If we're going to spend many thousands of taxpayers' euros on culling these birds why not first spend it on education on bins on awareness you know teach our kids teach lead by example and take care of our rubbish issue if we take away the food source we take away the seagulls interest in our area it's it's a very simple and logical straightforward approach to this problem if that doesn't work then, and a cull is necessary, then spend the money on a cull. It's going to cost a fortune. And, like I said before, if you cull too many of these birds and there's rubbish is still there, then other vermin, like rats, will end up uh, being, becoming dominant in the area. And believe me, if that happens, you'll write to the seagulls and ask them to come back. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Bye. For more information, check out www.martinhughes.ie or check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash martinhughes2019. Thanks very much.